Well, hey guys, in today's video I'm going to explain how you can multiplex a display using a microcontroller. It's very common, used in everything from calculators to you know, pretty much anything with a display on it. Not always used, but in this case, this calculator, the chip inside only has 28 pins, yet it has to address all these keys. You know, detect which key you're punching. And there's seven segments plus a decimal place. And there's a total of nine digits. The ninth one's used for, like, negative sign. And the dot tells me there's memory. So, you know, there's a lot of uh, little segments there to address individually. So, how do we do that? Well, in this case, I have a Pickaxe 18X microcontroller. It's actually obsolete. I got it like five years ago. Somebody sent me a Pickaxe chip to play with, and I thought it was pretty cool, and I bought more of them. Um, Arduino you know, has really caught on since then. And uh, so Pickaxe updated their chips to have more capability now. That's why this one's obsolete, but I still have it and uh, use it for this demonstration. So in a nutshell, I have fewer pins. I just have eight output pins here, and I need to control 15 LEDs. So the only way I can do that is to mul multiplex them. I could add a shift register, you know, even multi um, control more LEDs through multiplexing, but... You now just keep this as simple as we can and um, multiplex a 5x3 display. I'm just going to use the central LEDs here. Okay, let's show you real quick. Put the battery in. You can see it counting. That's even, odd pixels, all pixels, E and F, and it just cycles around. So it's just a demo program I made to show how it works. Now you can see it kind of, with the uh, shutter speed gets higher, you can see it kind of fade out as it scans through the display. So how does this work? Well, I chose a five row by three column matrix. That way I can make characters. It's easy to make characters. And you can kind of see a neat effect there with the shutter speed and the camera. I have to slow it down so it looks solid. It looks solid to the eye. It's just the effect of the faster shutter when it gets brighter. But anyway, um, five by three is great for uh, you know, displaying alphanumeric characters in their simplest form. So what I did is I have five rows with the resistor on it and the column. And you see the direction that the LEDs are connected with that display. So what I do is I display one line at a time and it scans through very fast and to the eye it looks solid like a solid number so if I'm going to make the number six I first turn on column one and turn all the rows low so that current will flow from the high to the low through each LED and it makes this part of the number six then this turns off second column turns on and it turns on rows 1, 3, and 5. Actually I should say it makes those go low to turn on the LED. So again the 1, 3, and 5 are go low and current goes through those LEDs only. Then that turns off and 3 turns on and this pattern lights up 1, 3, 4, and 5 
rows are set low and it makes that part of the figure of number six and again that scrolls real fast or strobes through real fast and you see the number six displayed there it is coming around I'm gonna block that so it looks solid So that's what's going on there in a nutshell. Now let me show you the programming I did. What I wanted to do is figure it out completely on my own without outside help. So when, you, when I describe the program, it's not necessarily how anyone else would do it. I'm not saying it's the best way, but I think it's pretty efficient. Well, here's the program. First, I have to define what the characters look like. The microcontroller has no idea how to make a number three, what it should look like to a human being. So you have to use a uh, bit pattern, and that's what I've done here. I just stored it into RAM, and if you turn this sideways, and because the columns are low, zeros would turn the LEDs on, so you can kind of see the bit pattern that made those up. And that, in fact, takes most of the space up in the program is essentially the character lookup table. And next, I put the pattern for the columns, you know, as they strobe through, go high and st strobe through each column, I put that into memory. And you might be asking, why not just put that here? So I have uh, eight outputs, and each zero represents an output. I could have done that because this is the first row, this is the, I'm sorry, this is the first column, second column, third column. I could have done that there, but I want the program to be modular so you know if I made a game or some other program I wouldn't have to rely on this you know kind of a cheat to make it work so I put that elsewhere in memory and the memory would call that up separately so it's not dependent on being in the you know the bit pattern for the characters part of the uh, uh, program. So, so again, I poked. Poke command just stores the uh, information into memory location. So I started at, you know, that's uh, string fifty. That's hexadecimal location. All the way down to right here. That's the last character, and the bit stored or the bit pattern for the columns are stored in another location. Okay. So, I guess it's better to explain this part first. This, this area, by the way, is the entire program, which writes to the screen. There's really not much to it. Okay, so B7, you know, that's just a variable, and I'm putting the starting address location, not the contents of that address, just the starting address into B7. B6 is a counter. That's how long the uh, digit is displayed, about one second. This memory area here, which is three bytes, ED, EE, and EF, that's my graphics aperture. In a way, you can think of it as a frame buffer, but here I'm calling it a graphics aperture. So what I'm doing, I'm putting the contents of B7 into this variable B8, and then I take that and stick it in the graphics aperture location. That's the first column. Then I increment that so I get the next column location or next column data and put it into the next area of the uh, graphics aperture that holds the second column so on and so forth for the third column 
And then if B7 is this value, which was the highest, well, just beyond the highest memory location for my uh, bit patterns, it just resets because the program just loops around, starts over again. Okay, so now we have this stuff put into the graphics aperture. Now, all I have to do is write that information to the LEDs, and this is how it's done. Well, first it checks the counter. If it reaches 100, it's going to go to the update and load in the next character. But we've just loaded in a character, so now, now we're going to run through this process. And if it doesn't equal 100, it's going to increment that by 1. First, it puts this address, not the contents, but this memory address into this variable. And this column, this is the column uh, pattern starting address, puts into that variable. And this just is a uh, for next statement for loops three times. So it takes this graphics aperture um, location and puts the contents of it into this variable and the uh, first column location puts it into that variable, puts the actual contents of that memory location into that variable is what I'm trying to say. And it writes those contents to the pins. So what it's doing, it's summing these most significant bits which holds the character pattern with the least significant bits which holds the column to the pins because we're going to scan through the display here to make the pattern. Okay, and once it does that, it increments these um, memory address locations for the characters or I'm sorry for the uh, that's the graphics aperture again and that's the column location and it reads the second and sends that to the pins and then the third sends that to the pins then it goes back and runs through this again so if this hasn't reached 100 it'll run through this again and it runs through real fast and that's what you know strobes the data out to the LEDs. So that's it. Just a little bit of code there. That's all it takes. When I set out to do it, I thought it would take a lot more code, but you know, it's very simple. And again, I wanted to make it modular, so if I wanted to, you know, have the inputs read something and display it to the screen, I, I could just modify the memory locations and it'd still have the um, column patterns and everything set up. All I have to do is pop the results of what I measured or whatever into you know the uh, upper five most significant bits and then this routine would display it for me. Well that's it. Thanks for watching.